to be doing solution now okay students i'm going to make sure i simplify this question for your own understanding so i need you to pay attention now we have 8 raised to power x minus 2 raised to power x is equals to 120. Now, this question is actually an indices problem. The only issue here is that we cannot actually use the laws of indices that we know to actually work out this question. We have to improvise. Then follow me and see what I'm going to be doing now. Okay, now look at 8 raised to power x. Do you know that 8 raised to power x can actually be written in index form as 2 raised to power 3 and raised to power x? Okay. Now, do you know I can still write this as 2 raised to power x or raised to power 3? Now, why can I write this? It is because if I have x raised to power n, and raised to power m is the same thing as x raised to power n m. Okay. Now n m it is commutative. So whether n m or m n is the same. So that is why I can be able to do what I've done. Then I will replace it so that I'm going to have 2 raised to power x or raised to power 3 minus 2 raised to power x is equal to 120. Now having this. I need to reduce the ambiguity of this question. I need to make it simpler. Okay, I'm going to do that by uh, substitution, by mass substitution. So, I cannot say let y be equals to 2 raised to power x. Alright, this is a very important thing that I've done here because it will simplify my question so that I'm going to have um, y raised to power 3 minus y is equal to 120 okay so y cube minus y minus 120 is equal to zero now you could not see that it is a problem of a polynomial now okay so i'm going to work out this polynomial now recall that in my previous video i show you how to actually uh, factorize and solve a polynomial now, what we are going to do here is uh, the try and error method. We are going to use it here. Now, we are going to assume a value for y that when we substitute the equation turns 0, just as it is equals to 0. Now, look at, I'm not going to use any negative because negative is not going to work here, any negative number. So, and I don't want to use 1 because 1 is too small. Let me start with 3. If I'm going to use 3, uh, if y is equal to 3, it therefore means that uh, I'm going to have 3 cube minus 3 minus 120. Clearly, this will not give me 0. So, I abandon this and I'll go use 5 now. Let me see 5. 5 raised to the power 3 minus 5 minus 120. Now, this is 125 minus 5 minus 120. Clearly, it will give me 0. Hence, we can now say that one of the roots or one of the zeros is that y is equals to 5. So, if this is one of the zeros, it therefore means that y minus 5 is equals to 0 is a factor. Now, if it is a factor, let's look for other factors and find other values of y. So, I'm going to divide. Remember your polynomial division. Okay, so I'm going to have this. Here I have um, y minus 5. Now, I'm going to have y cube. Now, just to make it look good and look okay and simpler, I will now have plus 0 y squared. Okay, because we do not have 0, we do not have y squared. So, I'm going to have it this way. Then, I have minus y minus 120. So let me see what will happen now. Remember what we did in our previous video? You look for that term that the way you multiply by y gives you y cubed. That term is y squared. So y squared times y is going to be y cubed. Then y squared times minus 5 is minus 5y squared. Then we subtract. 
subtracting i'm gonna have 5y squared then i'll bring down minus y all right so i'm going to have plus 5y here now so that when i multiply by y it gives me 5y squared then i'm going to have minus 25y of course i'm going to subtract just as i did earlier on and this is going to be 24y then i'm going to bring down my one my minus 120 and of course this is going to be plus 24 so that i will have 24y minus 120 okay once i subtract okay now i have y minus 5 as one of the factors then i have y squared plus 5y plus 24 all right now but you see i have to break down um this particular uh, quadratic equation now but from the look of it this quadratic equation is not factorizable now since it is not factorizable i cannot have and i cannot have other roots from it okay that are simpler as y minus 5 but again not just that it is not factorizable we should check do they actually exist that is the the, the zeros of this particular uh, quadratic equation do they actually exist if we want to test it we are going to use this b squared let's see if it is less than 4ac then it does not exist in the real plane. That is, it is imaginary. So we can check. Now, B, of course, you know, B is coefficient of Y in this case. So it's going to be 5. So I have 5 squared. Um, we have 4. A is coefficient of Y squared, which is 1. Then C is 24. Now you can see that 25 is actually less than 96. So the roots roots are imaginary so the only thing we can do with or we can work with is y is equals to five that is the only existing or real value that can actually be a solution to the polynomial so if y is equals to five recall that we may mention that let y be equals to 2 raised to the power x now what i'm gonna have here is uh 5 will be 2 raised to the power x now to work out this question we are going to take log okay we're going to take log uh of both sides now on doing that i'm going to have log 5 is equals to log 2 raised to the power x now recall this log has a base of 10 okay so you should take note of that all right now there is something that i need you to remember or to recall um under laws of under laws of logarithms recall that if i have a log of y raised to the power n and the base is x then it is equals to n log y base x now this goes vice versa okay so i can move now once i'm moving or i can write this as log of 5 base 10 is equals to x then log of uh 2 base 10 now looking for my x i'm gonna have that x is equals to log 5 base 10 all over log 2 base 10 but i need to simplify further now is on simplifying this further i will need the knowledge of um change of base under logarithms so now let me show you what it means if i have log a base b and i wish to change it to base c this is going to be log a base c then all over log of b base c now both the number and the base will assume the base of c 
Now, this also is both ways. So I can move from here down to this side. Now, if I decide to do that here, then it means that my x will be equals to log of 5 base 2. That is just it. So I have now concluded. This is the final answer. This is our answer which x is equal to log 5 base 2. Now, you can actually test or check your answer and you find out that it is actually very correct. Now, I've taken my time to explain this and um, I want you to continue to follow me. Don't forget to subscribe. I have very, very good and interesting videos coming your way. So, don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to pass your comment and like the video also. I want to believe it's a very good video, okay? So, Thank you for being with me.